So there is a policy for like public employees, especially like educators, oh, that right. we can't discuss our political viewpoints um, like during the school, like during time that I'm supposed to be teaching. But during lunch, if you want to talk about politics during lunch, we can because that's not instructional time. But regardless of whether or not I can talk about it right now, happy election day because there's no more political ads after today. Now, regardless of who wins, the biggest thing is that we all got to move on. We all got to move forward. The world keeps turning and there really won't be that many changes because there's a lot of people in the government. It's not a one person controlled thing. So that being said, we're moving on to math. Evie, only if it's about math. Yeah, but well, not exactly. Go to the Senate floor or the House of Representatives or the people will still continue to debate. They just will not be televised and popular like they used to be. But if you ever want to like watch what's going on in the House of Representatives or in the no, Senate or like I you can go, yeah you can go like there's places online that you can go watch what's going on. Well, I've actually been there, like, I yeah, we like five days ago. we went like two years ago when we did our DC trip instead of Chicago, but trust me, Chicago's <coughs> better. DC is crazy it crowded is. during the springtime because everybody goes there, like every school. So we have one last thing to do that is involving an estimate. What are you looking for? Pencil sharpener? Yeah. This top drawer. Right do not use a calculator when we're talking about estimates. If we go from 130 to 100, who can talk me through the math of how we would like think this through in our head to estimate this? Yeah. Um, I would do, since the change is 30, I do 30 over. Um, the original is 130, but I do 120. Ooh, they're trying to get you in a trap because the 100, be careful, I'm not dividing by 100, I'm dividing by the original, so that would be over 130. But Monica said that instead of doing 130, she'd think about 30 over 120. Now, why is that? Um, because if you cancel out the zeros and 30 and 20, 3 goes into 12. Ah, because 3 going into 12 is very easy. That would give me 25% approximately. Now, I know that it's not exactly 25%. What happens to the value if instead of using 30 over 120, if I had used 130, when the denominator gets bigger, what happens to the value? And if you want to think about this in an easy way, if you have four cookies to give to four people, everybody gets one. If you have four cookies to divide or give to eight people, or 12 people, or 20 people, so when the denominator gets bigger, your answer gets smaller. So if I want to try to approximate and get a little bit closer, this might be, if we were to guess, like, I don't know, 23%, lower it just a tiny bit since I know it's not actually 25. And then if we actually calculated this, let's see how close we got, 30 over 130 is 23.07%. And I did not know that yet. I haven't taught this since a year ago. That's just, if I know that this is not actually the denominator, it's close, then realize that don't stick with the number that you used like the wrong values for, tweak it just a little bit. And even if you had said like 24%, you're still really close. Questions on estimating that? All right, get out your three six, which you should have from yesterday. Anyone not here yesterday that needs the notes? <coughs> Awesome. So today, we're going to do exactly the same thing, except now we're dealing with finances. So a percent change, when we're talking about prices, ends up being called a mark up or a mark down. What do you think happens when there's a mark up? Actually, why do you think, I'll make the question a little bit harder, why do markups happen? Why do markups happen? Sean, we haven't heard from you yet. Um, I'm thinking mostly because when they fix the stuff, they make it look nicer, does it go? Yeah, I mean, that could be it. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, that could be a reason. Anish, you got any ideas why markups happen? Um, possibly, probably because, like, I'm not sure. So, let's back up and define a markup. Andrew, do you know what a markup is? Markup 
So this, yeah, our definition here says the markup is the amount of increase from the cost to the selling price. Too far. So, Jeremiah, you got your hand up. What's your thought? Maybe if more people are buying the item, mm -hmm. make the price. So I'm not going to change the price depending on how many people are buying it. Probably because then people will get mad. Like if I change the price because lots of people are buying it and I increase the price, then those people who already bought it are like, sweet, I got a good deal. And the people that were about to buy it are like, what the, what the crap, man? So I wouldn't really change the prices depending on who's buying it. Julian? Um, because you need to make profit. We need to make profit. So what we're talking about with Phoenix Fair, are you going to sell your items for what it cost you to make them. No. no, that would be dumb. So, instead, you do what? Who can talk to me about their business plan and what, like, give me a, like a few numbers and things. Allie? Um, I'm baking and I am, it costs me, it costs 60 cents to make one, one, let's say, brownie. Okay. And so it would be stupid to make it, to make the brownie 50 cents. So what are you charging for the brownies? I'm charging uh, 150, I think. $150, so then you'll make a profit of the difference between what it cost you and what you sold it for. Now here's the other thing that you guys don't have to think about yet. You had to put in work, and your work is worth something. So when we talk about a shirt, that they got the shirt in for $16. Let's say it's a nice American-made shirt. It's not super duper cheap. 16 bucks is what the store paid for it. But the store also has to pay for their electricity, their like the racks that the clothes go on, the store that they are inside of, the people that work in the store. So they this is not just to make profit, it's to make profit and pay all the things they got to pay. So, the percent markup to figure this out uh, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to zoom out. <clears throat> and actually, right here, this so they can make profit. Like, if you just want to underline or highlight that, that's the point of a markup. So to find your percent markup, same thing as percent change. Take the amount of markup or the amount of the change and then divide it by whatever it was previously. So here, if the markup from 16 to 28 was $12, I take my 12, divide by what the price was, they <coughs> marked this up by 75%. Most stores mark things up by over 100%. So when they bring in an item, they mark the price more than double. Can anyone think why we would, like, so let's say we bring in an item, for $10, let's make the math really easy to work. And I decide to price it for 25 bucks. And it doesn't sell. Jeremiah? Wait, they do that because like, if they double it, so the, the amount they bought it for would subtract like half of the money they got, so then they would get the money that they bought it for. Yeah, so if I double the price and it sells, then I get as much profit as what I had paid for the item. Because if I bought it for 10 and I sell it for 20, well, 10 of that goes back to what I already spent and I get that other $10. But what if it doesn't sell? Monica? You need to make a markdown or lower the price because then nobody wants it for that price, so you yeah. lower the price. If nobody wants it for the price that I have it priced at, we then apply a markdown. Now, here's the dangerous thing about percentages. If I increased my price by 100%, so I got my item for $10, have it priced for 20, and it's not selling, what's the maximum that I can mark it down by? Now the price is at 20 bucks. Noah, you got a thought here? What's the max I could mark it down by? And still, like, and not lose money. Because if I lose money, I might as well just close up shop and give everything away. 50%? Yeah, 50%.
So be careful the mark up amount percentage. And then if you turn around and mark down, those are going to be two very different things. Because now when I go to mark down, my whole or the original becomes what the price, like the selling price was marked at. So let's try this with a couple things. What is the percent markup for each of these items? So we are opening up a school store. Let's say we've realized that kids can't keep track of their notebooks or anything else. We're also going to have some bicycles, and we might as well sell some cars. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to make this entertaining. So in the school store, which actually makes sense if we have notebooks, how much did that price go up by, Elena? Yeah, so my increase was a dollar twenty-five cents. My price was. You want to keep going or? Twenty-five cents. Twenty-five cents. Make this easy. Don't touch a calculator. How many quarters are in a dollar twenty-five? Five. But what percent is that? Ooh, Jeremiah. 500 percent because we have to convert to percent form. So they took the price they got it for and marked it up by 500 percent, which does not mean the price is five times the original. It means it has increased by five times the original. So actually, the price now is six times what they got it for. A buck fifty is six times what they got it for because it went up by the 500%. That was the change. So try the bicycle and the car on your own. I want to see if you guys can do this. Mr. Hudson, yep. it makes sense to sell the bicycle and the car so it was like a college or something. If it was a college, it makes sense. Because yeah. Like maybe you need to ride the bike. I, I was actually thinking of a different problem where we do like a pen, a pencil, and something else, but yeah, that. This is not that same problem. So when I started school store, I just kind of was stuck and just decided to keep going with it. Yeah. The actual price is 150, not 125. I mean $1.25. I know. Okay. We do change over original. Oh yeah, okay. Change okay. over original. Okay. So you're only gonna actually write down one of the numbers given to you. The other one you have to calculate, you have to find the difference. Ashley, can you talk me through your work for the bicycle? So did you find your difference yet? How much is that? 120, so that would be my numerator. My denominator would be 180 because that was the original. And here, again, make your life easy. Put down those calculators for a moment. What can I do? To this division to make it a lot easier. Colin? Simplify to two thirds. Ooh, you're, you jumped away. I agree, but you jumped there really fast. First thing I can do, chop off the zeros. Okay. Stacked zeros at the end of the numbers can be canceled out because I just essentially divided them both by 10. Then I can see that these both have a common factor of what could they both Six. be divided by? Six. Six. So that reduces down to two thirds, which if we have memorized those conversion rules, that becomes 0.6 repeating forever, which becomes approximately 67%. If we want to round to the nearest percent, it told me. Approximately 67%. Now, the more expensive the item is, do you think we can still mark things up by like 500% when it starts really expensive? No, so the more expensive it is, the less markup you're going to end up having. So when we look at the car, Andrew, you want to walk me through the car? Um, so our change is 4,000. We started with 8,000. Cut off zeros. Cut off all the zeros. Mm -hmm. And then we get half. And we so get 50% increase for the car. <coughs>
any questions on marking prices up? What markup pretty much always happens without like without you even realizing or thinking about it and you really have no like you can't control this. Monica? Um I have a question and I I'm not sure what to the answer to your question. Okay. What's your question? Um wouldn't markup be this wouldn't doing a markdown be the exact same Yes, except that denominator changes because the direction that we're going. So when I go up, say I have my item that cost $10 and now I take it to 20. My increase is 10 and I started at 10. So 10 over 10, that's 100% markup. When I do the mark down, my item is at $20 and I mark down by 10 bucks. Now my change is 10 divided by the 20 that the price was. So let us do a couple examples. Um, <clears throat> mark up here, 310 to 550. What would be the difference there? Well, Colin, you just helped me with one, but what is the difference between 310 and 550? Uh, 200 and 240. This actually, again, stack zeros. I can chop those off. 24 and 31. Trying to think of any common factors, but 31 is prime, so that makes things a little difficult. We might as well use our calculator. Yes. And we get, go ahead and go all the way to percent form, do the multiplication by 100. Evie, is that a hand or no? No. Mm. Go ahead. 77%. 77%. Now, you're working at a concert hall and you have to do the pricing. Now, and this happens, like real world, this happens. The, like the group performing wants to make a certain amount off every single person that is there. So the group performing says, we need $20 from every single ticket. So that's the base cost. You gotta pay $20 per ticket to the band. But the concert hall needs to make their money. So the concert hall says that no matter what the band charges, we're going to do a 90% markup. So that's not quite doubling the price, but close. So we need to first figure out what will our markup be and then figure out the new price. So to determine the markup, what formula do you think this relates to that we've been using a ton? Do you know? Not percent error. That'd be if you were looking for the amount of error. This is kind of like the amount of error. Oh, I forget what it's called, but isn't it like how to find part whole and percent? Yeah. It's just our part formula. Get rid of this year because we're not talking about interest anymore. But our part formula, percent times, so this is going to be the markup. The markup will be part of the price. Jeremiah? And, oh, the Yeah, but be careful, that's not percentage, that is now dollars, because we just calculated how much we will mark up by. And then you add it up to 20. Yeah, so our new price, we take the original plus the markup, and we get that those tickets would be $38 for that concert. It's actually not too bad, of course, not. And depends on where it is. And depends on who it is. No, not really the performers. So, yes. our store is going to have a sale. We have not been doing very well. Our clothes are not selling. So, we decided to drop some prices. Our shirt that we had marked up at $28, we're now going to put on sale for $21. We need to make a sign that advertises our sale. And if you've ever like been shopping, you've seen signs that advertise percent off. And normally in really tiny letters, anyone know what it says right before the percent off? So it'll be like all items, oh, yeah. then really small print, and then like 90% off. So they're like yelling, then they're whispering, and then they're yelling again. Whitney? What they usually say when they do that is like 50% uh, off if you buy like 
this many items. Yeah. You buy two items, you get or one buy like a Something like that, Sean? So it's like they'll stay off the most common brands. Like they'll say 9% off except for Nike. Yeah. And they'll also put a little up to. Because if you put on the sign 90% off, everyone looks at the 90% off. But if they look at the up to, what could be your percent off if the sign says up to 90% off? Jeremiah? It could be, can it be anything lower than It could be anything lower. It could be 0% off. It could be the normal price. But still, the sign that says up to would be accurate because it's anything below that. They're not lying. They're not lying. So I literally was in a big, I think it was big, yeah, it was big lots the other day on Sawmill. Um, and they had gone around with highlighters and had highlighted on the sign where it said up to a certain percent off. Cause I bet you a customer complained and like made a big old scene about this sign says 40% off. No, it says up to 40% off. Read carefully. So we want to make a sign that's accurate though. We don't want any angry customers. So we want a sign that tells us the percent off of this sale. So to calculate that, we again take the amount of change, but now we're going to divide by what I wanted to sell it for, not what it started at, but the price I had it marked at. Because if you're talking about the percent change compared to, like when you walk into a store, do you know what the store paid for that shirt? No. no. So when we talk about the percentages, why would we reference a number that the customer doesn't know? So we reference the price that it was like on the price tag yeah. because that percent change, when we go down by seven, we're going to say that that price has decreased by whatever percentage that is. But we got to calculate that. So we set up seven over, and this is going right down from the markdown over selling price. So I'm still looking for my markdown, my percent. The selling price had been... 28, anyone see it? Julian? It's, it's a fourth, so this becomes a 25% markdown. So we could then make a sign, I cannot write this morning, that says this rack or this shirt or whatever is 25% off. We would not need to say up to or anything crafty like that because it actually is 25% off. Now we could still say up to, but we'd prefer a more accurate sign because saying up to would still be true. <clears throat> so now this is a problem that a lot of stores get into. Monis? What? Okay. No, it's just talking about that one. Oh, yeah, I do yeah, need to change one. that. Thank you. I think that thing might be losing its battery too. Well, it's out. It, was, it hasn't been working. Well, but it's not just an hour so off. It's more than a, it, that one. Always trust the clock on the wall. This, I, so being that this hand, and this is the really weird thing about clocks like this, it is more delayed than just an hour. Like we're an hour and 10-ish minutes behind. That tells me that at some point, I bet you the second hand <coughs> couldn't get up this side. Like I'm not joking. When it doesn't have enough power, it'll sit here and just keep trying to tick until finally it like gets where it needs to go. So I just must need to replace the battery. Thank you, it was a gift from a friend of mine because they know how nerdy I am. And that, the pie clock was a gift from my wife but I haven't gotten a battery for that one either. So it's just hanging out. So, so it was a gift for your wife. that one, yeah, she from. found it at Target. From, not for. That was pretty cool. Yeah, so stores get into issues when things don't sell. They don't sell, they don't sell, they don't sell, they don't sell. They're just taking up space and I want to finally get rid of it. So sometimes they'll put it on absolute final clearance, lowest price possible before we lose money. So literally the store's not making money anymore. They're just trying to get rid of it so they can get a new product in that will hopefully be more popular. So if this, if the store bought these couches for $835, and they had it priced for $1,599. Well, nobody bought it for that price, so obviously you were priced a little bit too high. They wanna figure out what to put on their sign for what their percent off is 
if they are just trying to get rid of it and not make any money? So what should we do first if we need to figure out that percent that it's now on clearance? Acadia, what do you think? What should we do first? Why? Because how do you get that Okay. I agree that I'm looking for percent, but you just told me to take 1599 divided by 835, which would come out to be a number over 100%. And I can't mark things down by over 100%. That wouldn't make sense. So remember to find, so we're looking for percent mark down, right? So to find percent mark down. Oh, right, good. It's the amount of decrease or the change in price over what we had it priced at, so the previous price. Oh. Yeah. I thought I got the answer in the answer. Sure. All right. So what I did was I subtracted 1,599 and 835 because that's the minimum you can... Um, do without losing money. Well, I so Ozzy is going to take his price down to what they paid. So my new price is going to be the 835. Yeah, and then you put that. So what did you get as the difference? Oh, I got, um, I don't think I wrote it down. 764. Guys, yeah, write not, down I, your I, work. I did write it down. So then what'd you do? Um, I made that as the numerator, and then I um, put 1599 underneath, because that's the selling price, mm -hmm. and then got 488% off that one. 48%? 48%. Okay, you said 400 something, um, I got confused. 48. So this sofa is now 48% off what it was. I'll write that so you can actually see my eight. Jeremiah? Is that accurate? If they bought it for 835 and wouldn't they be losing money because they also have to pay the staff and her? Yeah. They did, now, they didn't lose money on that item, but in the grand scheme of, like, we had this couch here for a long time, it took up floor space, like, yeah, it was not a good, like, that was not a good that sale. It's a picture. I know, but the world. Maybe that's so that as you plop down on it over and over and over again, it still keeps that nice shape. Whitney? I have a question. When yeah. people like sell, the, like for instance, the couch to the store, do they also mark it up so they can make profit off of it? Uh, I mean, they have to get the supplies for it and then make it. So do they sell for what it actually costs them to do, or do they mark what do it you up think? as well? They probably price it up. So it's probably, like that notebook at 25 cents is probably like five cents for the They also have to put in the, what they're charging for labor. So this 835 is not what the materials for the couch cost. The materials for the couch probably cost like 100 bucks. The labor for the couch was probably, you know, 50, 100 bucks. I don't know how long it took to make. The shipping for the couch, the, like you could look at all that stuff, but it will be less than that someone's already making money. Like whoever made that couch, they're making money. But if the labor cost is in that, that might be the money that you make. Because like, so my dad does woodworking. So if he retires and decides to just do woodworking, he could look at, I spent 20 bucks on this and I'm gonna sell it for 100 so that I make profit. He could look at it as I spent $20 on this and I spent five hours, I'm gonna pay myself for those hours and make the price the $20 plus the five hours worth of work. And then you could just make that. And a lot of people um, that run small businesses don't really pay themselves by the hour or anything like that. They just hope that they make money because they don't know that they'll necessarily have enough money to pay themselves by the hour. Because if I don't sell as much this month, I might make less. Like I personally, not just my store. Each one at electronic store, a new television comes in. This is actually how I got my surround sound system. So when new products come in, they want to get rid of the old ones. So the selling price for the TV had been 250. Now they mark it down to 200. Find your percent decrease. Oh. 
Oh, you shouldn't need a calculator for this. Not if you turn your brain on. Anish, what's your change? Fifty bucks, right? I can chop off those zeros. I've got five and twenty-five. What does that reduce to? One fifth. Uh, one fifth, which is, if you remember your decimal rules and your percent. Ooh, it's twenty. Because remember, a fifth could really be two tenths, which could really be twenty hundredths. Which is 20%. So always think through those equivalent fractions and then how we get to those decimals. So we would have a 20% discount on that TV. Is there homework tonight? It was on the TV when you came. It's the same combined assignment because it was just one big assignment for both lessons. Is that due tonight? Huh? Is it due tonight? Uh, I think uh, I think I made it due tonight, probably. No, it was on due date. That's due. Okay. Whatever the due date on Schoology is, that's what, when I was planning out, like, I have all this stuff written down in my planner. Yeah. Whatever it is, trust it. Like, the only thing it will ever do is get further. Like, I will only ever extend due dates. I will never, like, make them, oh, hey, now this is due tonight. Like, I no, I'm not trying to set you up. We, okay, we, my wife loves yoga. I'm maso menos on it. Asi, asi for you guys going to Spanish here. Asi, asi. So my wife loves yoga. Let's say she opens up a yoga shop and she has mats that normally are $38.99. Don't do yoga without a mat unless you're like on grass because you will hurt yourself. So the store bought them for $15. We're making a decent chunk of profit here, but we're having a sale this weekend. We're going to mark everything down 20%. Now, here is the question. Does the store still make profit? If so, how much? So take a moment. You guys can work like with your neighbors, whatever else. Take a moment. Figure out. And I'll, I mean, I'll go ahead and tell you. Figure out how much profit the store still makes. Back papers. Hey Dom, if you watch this video, you're mastered on that test now. Yay! Yay for Dom. So I've got some things written down here. I know that to find my sale price of whatever the price was, and I gotta take something away from it. Well, whatever I take away is gonna be my amount of discount. So I also set up I gotta solve my amount of discount. If I make profit. That's money beyond the $15, so I'd have to take that away because I gotta pay for it. So, Julian, can you walk me through finding my amount of discount? Yeah, always. Jaslyn, can you walk me through finding my discount? Guys, you're really scaring. Do we? Do, so, do we have questions? Like, are the passes just, no, chill? Are the passes just passing, or do you not know how to do this? Okay, so my discount is going to be 20%. 20% of what? Well, when it's a discount, it's off of what the price was. 
So when I look at finding my 20% of, it's of the original price, and of tells me to multiply. So we set up, again, amount of discount, this is just your part formula. Part equals percent times whole. So our percent's 20%. Jeremiah? So I do 20% of the 38.99, and that equals, you said, $7.80. So then I will take that 780 away from what the price was and find out that on sale, this would now be marked at $31.19. So I'm still going to make profit because it's still over $15. So then. We come down here and say, all right, 31, 19, 19 minus the 15 gives me? 16, 19. $16.19. It's weird until you said something nobody like, started doing. Like, we knew it, we needed to say it. Any questions? Done early. Done early. Although we could jump into three seven, but we've got tomorrow. Like it's my plan to just do that tomorrow. Oh, so I, I, I know. So orchestra people, yes. let's go ahead and get those passed out so that you have them. My socks are really messing with my ankles today. No, if you guys have noticed, that's what. They won't mess with their ankles. What'd you say? If you wear knee socks, they won't mess with your ankles. That's the, pro the issue is that they're tall. Sorry, I guess I should more accurately say my socks are screwing with my leg hair. They're like agitating my hair. You know what I want? I want some of those. Um, like, you see the, they used to make like elastic bands that you would have to put on the top of your socks because socks didn't have elastic in them. They would fall down. So they, I will be in California. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not sorry that I'll be in California. I'm sorry that I can't be in California. I went to the house for myself first. I know. You buy him? Um, I think I have a gift card. You do? Can I come? Why are you down here? Yeah. Where are you going to be in California? Have you ever been to the Lopez Island? The what islands? I have not. Um, we've got like a few minutes. Let's go ahead and start this, and then tomorrow, tomorrow maybe we can mine shaft or something. All right, tomorrow when we have a little, it doesn't make sense to mine trap with only like two minutes. It's not really that good. So let's just go ahead and start this so that we make it a little bit of the way through, and then tomorrow we will have much less to still deal with. So, two friends each agree to pay half for their excellent meatloaf. Now, they decided they're going to tip 20% because their service was good. And each friend has $8.50 with them. So, do they have enough money to complete their excellent plan about their excellent meatloaf? Yes. Now, who can remind me... How we calculate a tip. How we calculate the tip. I know. Jeremiah? It's 20% of the total amount spent. Or, yeah, total. So I do 20% of what? What it's number would go in there? Or the subtotal. Ah, it's subtotal. Sub when we tip, if you're doing it accurately, you're tipping off of what you bought. I did not buy the tax. Yeah. I did not eat the tax. I did not benefit. Well, okay, I, I am going to benefit from the tax because the roads get paved, the cops get like, so taxes are a good thing. Don't get me wrong, but I can't eat it. So I'm not going to tip based off the tax. So we do 20% of the $13. Guys, make your life easy. 10% would be 1.3. So 20% doubles that and is 2.6 or $2.60. So then, to figure out what we got to pay when everything gets looked at, we add that 260 with the bill total, not the subtotal, but the actual total, and we get 
sixteen dollars and ninety cents. Yes. Now let's find out. So if they each have eight fifty, what would they have combined together? Seventeen. Do they have enough money? Exactly. They have you enough money. Just barely. So they could actually then just tip an extra ten per uh, ten cents. We still have time. Hold up. They're, I don't know why they're moving. They're just putting computers away. I, guys, I'm trying to get us done with this as much today so we have less tomorrow. Trust me. I know you're like, ah, oh, we want to go to the next class. But this is less that we have to do tomorrow. Yo, Konosko, to, um, how do I say like, to... Wait, to what? Kind of remember how to say you like Spanish. All right, try this. So you bought two tickets to a stock car race. There's there's all kinds of different cars. So a stock car race. Each ticket was seventeen twenty five. You paid thirty eight fifty, which included a service fee. Service fees are extra added on top of what you're actually purchasing. I will leave this as a challenge for you guys to see if anybody steps up and tries to solve this. If so, I would invite you tomorrow when we start class to present this problem, your solution method, for what per ticket, be careful, as a percent rate to the nearest whole percent. So be careful with that question if you want to present it at the start of class tomorrow. Is there math counts today? There will be math counts today, yes.